We've gotten to a milestone in the bold predictions segment of Late Kick. We're at 10. Like WrestleMania 10 was in the garden in NYC. Well, this is bold prediction 10, and we're just using the Roman numerals at this point. We're just doing bold predictions version X. And we've got five more tonight. This has been a very, very fun segment. We're taking the things that you have predicted and you claim you would, you would bet your own hard-earned cash on. So here's the first one. Boy, we had to dive really deep on this one. We had a conflict in the newsroom earlier. Austin said Florida State will finish with more than eight wins. Not at least. Pay attention to the wording here. More than eight wins. Could play in the ACC championship and be in talks. Okay, so a lot of the other was hypothetical. But the key number here is FSU winning at least nine games. That's the other way to word that. They were five and seven last year. You could reasonably argue with different injury luck or bounce of the ball luck. They could have been seven and five. Doesn't matter because they were five and seven. What's the roster made of? Because we're asking for a four win jump in production this year. So what is the roster made of? We always want to go, as you know, if you watch the show, to the last five recruiting classes. Well, their last five classes, they've been really consistent. They have finished between 11th and 21st the last five years. You add on to that, that they have very notably had two top five portal classes over the last two cycles. So they've got a roster that probably screams to you mm, somewhere between seven and nine win caliber. It's not an elite roster. Uh, they're, they're not chock full of elite players. And if they have gotten them, typically so far under Mike Norvell, they've come out of the portal rather than traditional recruiting. Doesn't mean that can't change, but that's the way it is right now. Uh, the Travis Hunter loss on signing day was a big blow. But the quarterback position was rough last year. I'm not telling anyone in Tallahassee anything they don't already know, but think about these numbers. Stats and Info, a.k.a. producer Jesse, told me that they didn't have a single 300-yard passing game last year. But if that's not bad enough, they had seven games where they were under 200 yards passing. You are not winning nine games, or probably eight or seven, if that continues. So Jordan Travis has to have a big year here. They have to have a lot of their portal guys step up. That's just the way it is, Bruce Hornsby, right now. But here's the good news. As you look at their schedule, four of the 12 teams that they're playing won less than seven games last year, more than seven games. Only four of them had more than seven wins. So it's not like they have a murderer's row to play here. However, last year is not always the best indication of how good a team will be this year. They also have a third of their schedule against first-year head coaches. Eight wins is the number that everyone in Florida state land seems to be aiming for. If you go on the Knowles 24-7 board, that's what they're talking about. That's kind of the benchmark, eight wins. Under that, we don't like it. Over that, uh, we can take it. The over-under in Vegas is seven and a half, and it's juiced a little bit to the under. So, I mean, this is right around a solid, bold prediction. But if they're going over eight wins, I got to put that at a seven at least. I mean, FSU at nine wins... It's, that's a little bit too rich for my taste. I gave that a seven on the boldness scale. Next up, this one's pretty bold. Brennan said, Bama and Georgia will each have a loss during the month of September. Okay, I don't think this is going to happen. This is, a, this is a nine on the boldness scale. Here's your problem. Before you even look at Georgia's schedule, you are asking Alabama to lose as a 16-point favorite at Texas. Because Bama doesn't really play another losable game in September. So you're saying both of them are going to have losses. Well, Bama's got to lose to Texas, which is not out of the realm of possibility, but right off the bat, you're asking a 16-point underdog to beat Bama outright. By the way, with a brand new offensive line and a first-year starter at quarterback. So it's a tall task, not impossible, but a tall task. But if the Horns do pull the upset, then we got to ask a couple of things to happen, one or the other, I guess, with Georgia. Either Oregon's got to beat Georgia in week one, and the line on that game also happens to be 16, or Georgia's got to lose at South Carolina in week three. That'll also be a double-digit favorite situation for Georgia. Got to have both of those happen. Bama's got to lose to Texas, and Georgia's got to drop one of those games. I just don't think it's going to happen. These are the top two preseason favorites in the national championship odds at Caesars. Bama's plus 200, Georgia plus 325. At Pate State Sportsbook, I would probably have Ohio State at number two and Georgia number three, but I digress. They do a pretty good job at Caesars, too. That's kind of why they're in business. I don't think this is going to happen. This is a nine on the boldness scale. I would be more interested if you guys think one of them is going to have a loss in September. Like, what would Jesse always sends me an info packet with his own boldness scale? 
I think he made this one a 10. Jesse, what would you say? I mean, just one of them lose. Georgia or Bama have a combined one loss or more. I'd say even that's like a five or six. Seven. Jesse says seven. Thank you, Jesse. The alleged Jesse. Uh, moving on. Okay, this one gives us a little more wiggle room. Joseph said Notre Dame's going to lose at Ohio State in week one, but then they're going to run the table and they're going to get in the playoff. I appreciate this, Joseph, because you gave us more wiggle room than our viewer a couple of weeks ago who just said Notre Dame's going to run the table. Okay, I have a very hard time, just me personally, seeing Notre Dame go into the shoe and beat Ohio State in week one. There's a lot of new at Notre Dame, and there's a lot of really, really aggravated, seasoned players and coaches at Ohio State that aren't particularly happy with the way last year ended, and a lot of them are back. So they're just, they're a more talented team, too. So you're giving us the ability to chalk up the first week as a loss here. I, I think it will be. I don't want to make this a prediction segment yet, but I think it will be. Okay. But after that, there is good news, I guess, depending on how you want to look at a schedule. Notre Dame's not going to be a decided underdog the rest of the way. And their four toughest games the rest of the way are games like at North Carolina. Then they play Brigham Young in Las Vegas the following week. And actually, they got a buy between that. Okay, so at UNC versus Brigham Young in Vegas. They've got Clemson at home. Uh, they've got Boston College at home. They go to USC. There are one of two ways to look at this. Remember, there's no margin for error. I would guess a two-loss Notre Dame is not making the playoffs. So they got to win every one of these, let's just assume. You could take one of two approaches. Either you could say, well, which game are they definitively going to lose, which I don't like to use as my methodology behind schedule breakdowns. Or you could just say, how are they going to overcome the totality of that schedule? They don't play FCS teams, so there's no true cupcake on there. Uh, there are some games where they'll be double-digit favorites, but there is no true cupcake. Uh, my strong lean is they are going to drop another game at some point there. And that's even if they beat Ohio State. I just think the totality of the schedule will be too much for a team with a lot of firsts. Tyler Buckner has got to come through at quarterback. Marcus Freeman's got to come through as a head coach. And here's a fun fact about Brigham Young. As you're looking at the schedule here, you know, they play Brigham Young October 8th. They got to buy before that. It's in Vegas. It's a neutral site game. I don't like to give credit to Parker at Stats of War on Twitter, but he did find a pretty interesting stat. So thank you, Parker. One of 19 teams in the country, that's Brigham Young, one of 19 teams that return both coordinators, head coach, and quarterback. Now, that's a fun little fact to put in your back pocket. And if Brigham Young ends up pulling the upset, I will never recall crediting Parker. And I will absolutely take all the credit for myself in five or six months if that happens. But that's a good one to keep in mind. So I'm going to call this an eight on the boldness scale. Notre Dame losing week one but running the table, that's still pretty bold. I'm going to call that an eight. Uh, here's one that will not make too many people happy, especially down in the bayou if it comes to fruition. Frank said, Brian Kelly is overhyped. Well, that's a mean thing to say, Frank. And LSU was nothing special last year. The second part checks out. I don't know about the first part. He continues, they won't be anything special this year. They won't even make a bowl game from Conway, Arkansas. Now, Frank, I feel some bias in this tweet, but I'm telling you, I, I think it's only a six on the boldness scale. I personally happen to believe there are six wins, at least, on this schedule. But here's what you need to do. If, if, you could, if you could do me a favor here, if you're LSU, if you could beat Florida State in week one, it would make me a whole lot less stressed out about them getting to six wins. Because if they don't beat FSU, a game they are favored by around a field goal in to start the, a field goal, a field goal in to start the season. If they don't beat FSU, they're going to probably need some upsets. Uh, it's going to be very, very tricky. They have a very, very backloaded schedule. So here's what they need to do. They need to start 4-0. That would be Florida State, Southern, Mississippi State, and New Mexico. The good news is those games are all at home. I know they play FSU in New Orleans. I stand by my statement. These games are all at home. The reason they need to be 4-0 there to make sure that they go six wins or more and go to a bowl game is because starting October 1st, if you're listening on podcast, you can't really appreciate the ridiculousness of what we're looking at here. They run off a streak of at Auburn, Tennessee, at Florida, Ole Miss, Alabama, at Arkansas. Here's supposed to be the cupcake, UAB, 
they would compete in the SEC very, very readily, and then at Texas A&M to end the year. There is no gimme. There's no layup. There's nowhere to catch your breath other than the bye week. And at that point, given that lineup, even the bye week may be tough for them. They need to be 4-0. I, I trust Brian Kelly to not have the catastrophic upset there in year one. I don't think they're falling to New Mexico. I'm just going to cross my fingers and hold my breath and think by the second or third to last week of the year, they'll be able to handle UAB, but who knows? Right now, their over-under is seven total wins, and it's heavily juiced to the under. So the expectation in Vegas is somewhere between six or seven wins. We'll see. I think they're going to make a bowl game. This is a six. Calling LSU to not make a bowl game is a six on the boldness scale. That's the kind of thing where I go, ooh, I don't know about that. But I say it very quietly because there is that possibility at least. Uh, last but not least, this was a well-worded question. Alex said, NC State is the real deal. They will finish with the best record of all the teams in both Carolinas. Are we serious with this town name? Fuquay Verena, North Carolina, I guess. I hope so. Um, all the we win all the Power Fives. I assume he means Power Fives. Out of all the Power Five teams in the Carolinas, here's part A. Can all of you readily name all the Power Five teams in the Carolinas? Well, Director Colin just spoiled it for you if you're watching on YouTube. We got Clemson, we got North Carolina State, we got Wake Forest, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Duke. And you see the win totals there for Vegas. Because all we're asking here is, can NC State win more games than any of these teams? Clemson is the favorite here. They're over under 10 and a half. North Carolina State and Wake are kind of second and third, respectively, at eight and a half. A little bit more juice favor uh, by the way of NC State. So clearly we're going to mark Duke off, all due respect. I don't think they're going to contend for having the best overall Power 5 record in the Carolinas. I don't think South Carolina, all due respect, and, and we appreciate the inclusion in the hype videos, I don't think they're going to have the most wins of anyone in the Carolinas. So we got four teams here probably that we're picking from. Clemson, NC State, Wake Forest, North Carolina. I would be interested to hear what you think about this. If you're riding around listening on podcasts, I don't care. Just shout it out. Make sure your window's not rolled down. Uh, but if you're watching the live show, like in the live chat or wherever, I actually want to read the comments on this because I have, a, I have a little feel on this. And you know I'm not totally sold on Clemson yet this year. There's still a couple of months for you to sell me on them. But Clemson and North Carolina both face Notre Dame in the out-of-conference because it doesn't happen to be a conference game this year. NC State does not. You know, NC State's got a far more workable schedule, but if you're looking at Clemson's schedule right here, uh, they open at Georgia Tech, uh, which has is all kinds of fascination around it just as a standalone game. But then they, they go to Florida State later in the year. They go to Notre Dame. Uh, they've got Miami at home. Wait. I think also has a very, very workable schedule. Jesse described Wake's schedule earlier today, and I said, is it really that soft? Yeah, it's, it's that soft. And it's just the way it is. Second Bruce Hornsby reference. But I still think NC State can pull this off. So this is a six on the boldness scale for me, saying that NC State's going to have the best record of all these teams. I'm going to go back to that pesky little stat that Parker over at Stats of War brought up. Because out of all these teams... Clemson, NC State, Wake, North Carolina, South Carolina, Duke. Out of all those teams, there's only one that brings back quarterback, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and head coach, and that's NC State. And by the way, that returning quarterback could be a fringe Heisman contender this year, and that defense is incredible. Was already last year and stands to be as good or better, barring injury, of course, this year. They were 9-3 and three already last year. So they're sitting at eight and a half as the over-under here. They go to Clemson on October 11th. That may very well decide who wins this, and not only the ACC, but who wins in this hypothetical. I, I don't think it's anything more than a six. I don't think it's bold at all to suggest that NC State could have the best record of all those teams. That is how bold prediction segments are supposed to work. We, uh, we appreciate the participation. That tweet went out like two months ago. I'll probably have to release a new one because... We're still getting feedback on that. I don't even know how you guys find it. But I'll probably put another one out this week so we can have a fresh batch to take us to uh, Bold Prediction version 20.